Hey everyone, Tim here with Snap Attack. Let's dive into this week's threat snapshot on a BPF door. So as the name implies, uh, this malware is using Berkeley packet filters. And I'll say it's not every day that you're gonna be analyzing nation state level malware, but this one here is, is really, um, it's sophisticatedly simple. So it's using um, some very basic anti-forensics techniques. Um, again, it's, you know, hiding what uh, the actual true processes are if you're using like the PS command. Um, it is memory resident, so it's not gonna be on disk. And really the key thing here is unlike, you know, say Cobalt Strike or other C2 frameworks where it's gonna beacon back, uh, this implant is going to uh, use Berkeley packet filters to listen and intercept any network traffic on any open port. So let's say you have a web server that's running and um, users are going to it normally on port 80 or 443, those connections will be fine. But if the operator you know, connects to that port, sends the magic packet and password, they'll get back a reverse shell and again, running as root. So really kind of cool piece of malware. Huge shout outs to uh, Kevin here as well as PWC for tracking this. Um, lots of examples on you know, uh, you know, virus total and Twitter that you can take a look at. So we actually pulled this into Snap Attack, and we're going to share this out with the community. So be sure to take a look at the link below. Um, so there's a couple of pieces here. Um, there is a disclosed uh, source code for the uh, the implant itself. So that was up on Pastebin. We're going to use that on the victim machine and download that. And then there's a couple of examples of the controller. So this is what the operator would use to interact with it. Um, I think the reason that we have samples of the controller around is because, again, if you're in an internal network where there's natting and things, um, they're gonna use probably a jump box on there to pivot to other machines internally. Whereas if this were installed on say a public facing web server, they could interact with that directly and get onto that host. So. That's why we have that here. Um, there is a little bit of uh, some anti, you know, forensics kind of stealthy things in the controller too. Not nearly as much as the implant, but I think we'll deep dive into that in another video. Um, doing some light reversing of the controller, we can figure out some of the commands and arguments that it has, which again, a little out of scope for the snapshot, but wanted to really kind of take a look and talk through this technique here. So again, we're using our, our capture tool uh, we're going to go to uh, Pastebin, we're going to grab the file, we're going to download that. And uh, very basic here, we're just going to use GCC to compile. Uh, don't have to do anything special uh, or install anything else other than the standard libraries here. And that's going to compile this for that system. And then we just need to execute BPF door. Um, I will note you have to run it as root. Um, obviously, for doing those kind of low-level packet filtering things, it's going to take root permissions. Um, and that's really it from the victim machine. Um, I will say here that we also do have, um, you know, a web server Apache 2 running, which we'll see here in a minute. Um, pivoting over to the attacker here on Kali, we're going to see, we're going to go and download a sample of the controller. Um, again, this is from Malware Bazaar, so you can go and download that here. Uh, without any login or anything. It's not behind a paywall. And all we're going to do is kind of bring that over, um, unzip the file, password is infected, like, you know, most of your, you know, malware samples. Um, going to quickly here just kind of see and prove out that there is a web server running on our victim machine. So we can, you know, go to that, you know, here's the basic, you know, default page. Um, and now we're actually going to go rename the implant we're going to uh, modify it to make sure it's executable. And then we're going to actually just run through and uh, run these commands. So with some basic reverse engineering, we can see the arguments here. There's a TAC H, which is going to be the, the host that you're going to target. There's a TAC D, so that's going to be the port that you're going to connect to on the host. And then there's going to be a TAC S, which is, I'm going to say, your server port. So. Um, That'll actually go through and connect. The password is in the implant. It is just for fun, which is, I think, very interesting if that was you know, being used widely, but I feel like this was a, an early test case of the, the backdoor. 
And then you can see here we've got a root shell. Um, this is connected in here. You can see, you know, the, the shell um, spawning. And again, they're hiding their processes. It's showing up again in PS is postfix master and those things. And again, port 80 still works. So um, again, they're none the wiser. Um, again, it's just really looking for that magic packet and sending that data back. So really cool session here. Um, this is also very hard to detect. So uh, I'm gonna take a look here and see some of the detections that we've created and talk through some strategies. So if we're gonna take a look at our process graph, um, really this is probably most vulnerable during its setup phase. Um, so when you run BPF door, it is going to run these set of commands uh, really in kind of a quick succession. So you see this in a lot of the samples that we've seen, it's going to uh, delete itself in case it's there copy itself into this um, dev shim, which is a, a RAM disk. It's going to make it executable. It's going to run it. Um, this init command basically says, hey, we've already done this, you know, copy and install. So um, don't have to do that again. And it's actually just going to fork and run. And then it's going to remove itself from the RAM disk. So at this point, it's living only in memory. Um, it will not survive a reboot. Um, but it will be listening in for the magic packet and will provide the shell. So again, pretty cool technique. Again, a couple ways that we can take a look and detect this. So this one here is um, again, looking for the file created in dev shim. So a couple of different, you know, pathways that we can see and uh, file names we've seen. So um, they seem to like the, the K dump, uh, either K dump flush DB, um, or, or files like that. So this could be a very interesting way to, to find it. Um, you know, we, we've seen that here in evidence and some of the other variations. Um, another one is this lock file that they use. So um, in order to prevent the uh, malware from running multiple times and, you know, having multiple filters installed, they drop a lock file to var run. And um, there's a couple names that they use. Uh, a lot of the ones we've seen are using heldrun.pid, but I've seen some others here. Again, this um, xinet d, syslog d reboot. Um, so looking for, again, something in dev shim creating that PID file. Again, some other interesting things. There's a user root. Um, those, those PID and lock files are also empty. So there are some, some evidence here. Um, Coincidentally, if you know the file names, you could also put those there and that could be kind of used as a kill switch to prevent installation. Um, that said, I would not rely on that as a technique. Um, last piece here I'm going to talk through is just, again, because there is a, a very interesting kind of monitoring mode here, um, you can send it the magic packet without the password and you can get back a single UDP packet to basically do a heartbeat to say that it's alive. Um, that's here in this, this code snippet here, where again, if you log in and it's case two, um, it's going to send back that, that UDP packet with, um, just the payload of one. So we wrote a quick scanner that you can use for your own internal networks. Um, I'll say it's fast enough to scan your own, you know, single IPs or small ranges, not fast enough to scan the internet. And we can show real quick here what that looks like. So we've got a Kali machine up here. Um, I've got the controller just for fun. So you can see I've got my shell. We can run that. So now if I was going to go through and use the scanner here, um, BPF door scanner, give it the target, the port, the port range. Again, you could do a range for both the ports or that. Um, your local IP and your local port that you want to connect back to. And this will scan. Um, going to see here that gets back the magic packet, saves that this host is compromised. And uh, again, really quick tool if you wanted to scan. Um, again, given the kind of complexities around detecting it on the endpoint, I think this is a really good way to quickly look and diagnose if you have any affected systems in your network. So I think this will be a valuable tool for the community. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll probably put out some more content in this because this is something that we've been looking at quite a bit. Um, if you like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us, and we'll see you next week.